Welcome back to the main stage, everybody. Um, I hope you had some good, good uh, conversations in the booths. Um, so I am very, very, very pleased to um, welcome the uh, Mazars team uh, to the main stage. And I'm going to first and foremost hand you over to Kathleen, who's going to run through a presentation. Amazing. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. So I'm Kathleen. So I'm an assistant manager within the talent acquisition team here at Mazars. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview as to who we are, and then I'm going to hand over to Ellie, who's going to run through kind of her career as a school leaver at Mazars, and then we'll hand over to Ollie, who is currently studying and working as a school leaver at Mazars. So just as a little bit of background as to who we are. So we are an international firm, and um, so we operate as a United Partnership, and we kind of work across kind of six different service lines. We've got audit, accounting, tax, financial planning, financial advisory and consulting as well. So we take into school leavers across our advisory consulting teams, accounting teams and audit teams here at Mazars. So we are in around over 90 countries in the world at the moment. So you can see we are quite a large firm so that kind of covers off exactly where we are. And just in terms of the UK, um, we are in 17 offices, but we only recruit into 13 of our offices. So we do tend to have kind of a school leaver role across um, all of our offices. So whether that be up in Scotland, so Edinburgh and Glasgow. Um, we're now actually in Newcastle. So we used to be in Durham, um, Leeds, Manchester, Leicester, Nottingham, Birmingham, Milton Keynes, London, Sutton, Bristol and Poole. So that's where we recruit into. So. In terms of our application process, we are live at the moment with all of our school leader vacancies. So what you'll do first of all is you'll have kind of a scroll through a website and once you find the right role for you, you'll submit a online application. So as part of your online application, you'll fill in kind of your personal details, including your education, work experience, and we also ask you a motivational question. That's around why Mazars, why that role and why that qualification. So once you submit your um, application, you're then invited to our online strengths assessment. So our online strengths assessment includes um, a numerical test and also aptitude testing as well. So if you are successful in those testings, we will come back and screen your application just to kind of read through your motivational question and also ensure that you meet our entry requirements. So our entry requirements at the moment for a school leaver is 112 UCAS points across any of your A-levels and of be in English language and maths. So obviously we do take into consideration any extenuating circumstances or anything like that. So we would still look at your application even if you don't meet those entry requirements. So once you have passed our application stage, you're then invited to a first stage interview, which is all done on the telephone with our recruitment team. So it's a competency-based interview. I always recommend candidates, you've probably heard it loads of times, but to think about kind of the star model when answering questions when it's competency-based. So that's thinking about the situation, task, action and result. And then if you are successful in that telephone interview, you're then invited to one of our assessment centres. We are keeping assessment centres virtual at the moment and I don't see that changing anytime soon. So you'll kind of log on to one of our virtual assessment centres and you will take part in a one-to-one -one interview. With a senior member in the team, you will do a group exercise, a case study and you'll do a retest of your numerical test. We also provide you with time to speak to some of our current trainees as part of the day and you also have an opportunity to speak to an applicant mentor before the assessment centre so you can kind of ask them a little bit more about the day before you attend and we also provide you with a coaching call with someone from our recruitment team kind of as part of your application process with us as well that is our application process i'm now going to hand you over to ellie who will introduce herself Hello everyone, I'm Ellie. I'm a manager in audit. Um, I've started as a school leaver seven years ago um, and I'm now a manager. Um, so I started when I was 18 um, and I'm now sort of part of our real estate asset management team, which is sort of a new team that we're developing within Mazars. So my career at Mazars started when I started my AAT qualification, which was in year one and sort of year two. Um, and then I moved on to my ACA qualification in year three and year four, which were you get some exemptions as well as part of your AAT qualification. So it means you don't have to sit all of the ACA qualifications. Then I did probably year five and year six, um, where I started to sort of lead bigger engagements because I was then completely exam qualified at the age of 22. Um, so it meant that I was able to sort of start 
actually leading audits, starting to manage smaller portfolios. And then last year I was sort of promoted to manager. Um, so there's definitely some benefits of uh, joining the government school leaver. You sort of qualify quicker um, and you get the experience while you're studying. And you also get paid at the same time, which is obviously a bonus for a lot of people. Um, as well at Mazars, there's been a few things that I've done that are not sort of things that are sort of relate to the, your career, really. So things like being part of the team's netball team. Um, I've also been part of sort of some of the committees that we run, such as Mazars Young Audit Committee um, and championing new software that we're sort of out there to get. Um, and there are probably just a few sort of hints that if you are going into this as a school leaver, um, probably my top tips are probably just to get involved as much as you can. So whether that's any sort of events or any sort of whether that's actual work, just try and get as much knowledge as you can and also learn from the people that you're sort of working with. So I think that's sort of it from me as a little whistle tour. So I'll then pass over to Ollie. Thanks very much, uh, Ellie. I'm not as quite I'm not quite as far in my career as, as you are in yours. Uh, but I joined three years ago um, in our Liverpool office, as it was back then, um, and I, I've since transferred to our Manchester office. Um, so I work in accounting and outsourcing. So we provide um, just that, really, accounting and outsourcing services to uh, to privately owned businesses, primarily SMEs. So businesses with a turnover of sort of under twenty million pound a year. Um, what do I do day to day? Uh, good question. Um, a real rate, mix of things, really. Management accounts, so that's monthly or quarterly accounts for businesses. Uh, statutory accounts, which are your annual filings and company's house. Um, corporation tax returns and personal tax returns. So like Ellie is a bit of a specialist in real estate audit. Um, I'm not particularly a specialist. Um, I, I do quite sort of a lot of services. Um, so as I say, I started three years ago in our uh, three years ago. Um, and I've just qualified at AAT level. Um, so I have the fancy post nominals MAAT. Um, I might have to start putting that on my email signature, to be honest. Um, and I've just started studying for my ACA qualification. Um, so I have 10 exams over the next two years. Um, and then touch wood, I'll be a chartered accountant um, by then. Um, if you could move on to the next slide, please, Kathleen. Um, so where did it all start for me? Um, now that the pit photo on the left is is of Ignite. Um, so back then, Kathleen probably knows the exact number. There was 200 odd um, of us. When, when I say us, that's school leavers and graduates that started. Um, and we started on a three day training course down in rugby, if I remember correctly. Um, now, you probably can't see me um, even if you tried squinting. But I am at the back on the right hand side on a table. Um, and where am I now? So the photo in the middle and on the right uh, was this September. So I led uh, the national outsourcing training sessions uh, for our new um, school leavers and graduate intake. So that's a bit of a sort of a, a when, where and when, uh, there and now, shall I say. Um, if you could move on to the next slide, please, Kathleen. So I thought I'd, I'd just sort of talk about some of the other things we do at Mazar, uh, rather than just the sort of day-to-day -day job. Um, so a real big sort of push at Mazar is, is CSR, which is corporate social responsibility. Um, so each year we each get a day where uh, we can go volunteering in the community at charities, things like that. So the, my first CSR day on, on the left, um, we spent a morning serving breakfast to a homeless shelter um, to about 50 help, uh, homeless people in Liverpool. Uh, so that was an early start. I think we started about half six in Liverpool then. Um, and breakfast was served, I think, from eight o'clock onwards. Um, then in the middle, uh, that was us painting a, uh, a, a sense in Warrington, where I live. Um, and that was us painting a room for them. A um, bit of a sort of a funny story. Uh, we got there at nine o'clock, ready to start. And we're ringing the doorbell um, and no one was answering. So we were, sit, we were just sort of sat outside for about half an hour, 40 minutes waiting. Um, and then eventually somebody came and opened up. Um, now, there was somebody in there, but they were deaf, so they couldn't hear the doorbell. Um, so perhaps should have thought of that one when, when they, uh, they built the, the building. Um, and then on the right, uh, this is me in September, just gone. Uh, so I ran the Manchester Half Marathon. Uh, I raised just short of £2,500 for the Motor Neuron Disease Association. 
Um, and then the, the picture sort of to the right of that uh, was, was the wider team that, that did the 10K and half marathon. Uh, the wider team did it, it raised money for Young Minds. Um, and likewise, they, they raised just short of two and a half grand. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend um, going watching the call scene as the night before, as I did, because it was quite tough doing a half marathon and about six hours sleep. Um, so if you could move on to the next slide, please, Kathleen. Um, so, so, you know, what else do we do? We don't just sit in the office or, or sit at home as I'm now working all day. Um, every now and then we do do some sort of fun stuff. Uh, one of those is we, we went, my team went hiking in the Peak District um, a few months ago. So we had a day of just sort of team building, um, getting to know each other a, a bit better um, and just having a bit of a laugh, really. Um, it was all fun and games until I took us around the wrong route. And to get back on track, we would had to walk an hour and a half backwards um, or we could climb over a hill. So I took the team climbing on a hill on all fours, uh, which was absolutely brilliant. Um, next slide please Kathleen and just a couple of other things we, we sort of do um, so each year the the local um, young professional society or the local young chartered accountants chartered accountant society uh, have balls each year obviously we've not had one since covid um, so I'm, I'm waiting to get my black tie out again um, and so that on the left was the El Casa ball so that was over in Liverpool in April 2019 um, and on the right was me when I won a, a um, an award at the, our National AOS Day last year um, in recognition of, of apparently providing an excellent client service. Um, and uh, I won a nice 50 quid Amazon gift voucher from that. Um, so it's, it's good not just to leave with your salary at the end of the day. Um, so, But why did I join as a school leaver? Um, uni really wasn't for me. Um, but a, a huge sort of positive is that, that I get the on the job experience rather than just doing the qualifications. So uh, and, and everything I do in, in my sort of exams, I end up then applying day to day um, or not, not absolutely everything, but, but a, a, a big chunk of what I do in exams, uh, what I learn about in, for exams. Um, I've got absolutely no debt, which is brilliant because all my mates have just come out of uni and are saddled with debt and are skint, um, whereas I'm not, uh, which is brilliant. And I think that is, uh, is me, Kathleen. So over to you. Amazing, thank you both so much. So I just kind of wanted to quickly touch upon what teams we recruit into for our school leaver roles. So you've heard from Ollie of saying that's within our accounting and outsourcing team. So we recruit into kind of four different strategic markets. So we've got our small to medium enterprise, which I assume is potentially what Ollie is in. And then we've got our privately owned business team, our industry and services and financial services team. And then I'm going completely blank on our healthcare team and then we've got um, audit and obviously you've heard from Ellie who's based on our financial services team but within audit we also recruit into industry and services public and social sectors and privately owned business and one that you've not heard about today is advisory and consulting so we take school leavers into our kind of advisory function so you do a rotation scheme where you study your AAT and your ACA and you get the opportunity to work across kind of lots of different teams so within that you've got forensics you've got mergers and acquisitions, restructuring, bankruptcy, and that kind of thing, and you kind of rotate amongst that. And we've also got roles this year within our risk consulting team. So that's our internal audit team as well. So that is new for this year. They haven't gone live yet, so they're hopefully going to go live um, early next week when it comes to um, internal audit. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pop myself on mute because I think I've got some background noise from being in the office, but I will stop sharing my screen now. Um, I'll hand back over to <laughs> Ali, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for that, everyone. Um, really good insight and really appreciate uh, both of your stories, Ollie and Ellie, and um, nice to see some snaps alongside it as well. So thank you very much for, uh, for sharing those. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go through um, a, few, a few questions um, that have come in. So thank you very much, everyone, for popping the questions into the Q&A and don't forget to keep them coming in and upvote the ones that you uh, want us to ask. Um, so I might open the first one up to Ollie. So Ollie, I believe you are maybe uh, the most recent in, through the application process. So um, a question from uh, Faris. So thank you very much, Faris. What would you say is the toughest stage of the applica application process and how would you best prepare for it? 
Um, I actually think the toughest stages are the early ones uh, where you're doing the, the sort of um, it, it, just the on, pure online bits. Uh, the reason being that I personally am a lot better sort of talking in person. Um, so I, I interview fairly well, if I say so myself. Um, whereas the, the, online for, the online sort of um, questions you're just filling in and they're quite, as, as with everything, they are quite generic. Um, but, but, uh, and the hardest thing is to sort of get yourself across in them. Um, so how, how to prepare for them just first of all before you start answering them tackle just write down a few things about yourself um, and, and actually think why you why you're applying for the role do a bit of research from Mazar um, so don't go into it cold turkey I've actually look at Mazar what what, what Mazar are about um, for example audit quality is a, is a really um, key, key driver at Mazar so that if you're applying for an audit role you might want to mention something about audit quality in your application process uh, in your application um, but so yeah get to know get to know Mazar have a think about your, your own strengths and your own weaknesses um, and, and just try and get that across in, in the writing Thank you very much um, I should also point out as well I think you provided maybe two of the best lines that I've had today in terms of I am not skint and uh, I'm pretty good at the application process <laughs> if I do say so myself so enjoyed both of those um, okay thank you uh, Faris for your question um, Maybe a question for both of you, um, Ellie and Ollie. So from Annalise, um, does it matter what kind of qualifications and subjects you take before applying? Um, no, I don't think it does. Um, my A-levels that I took were uh, maths, business and information technology. So not necessarily having anything to do with sort of accounting at that level. Um, so I think it's just making sure you get the points um, over, the, over the, the sort of whatever A levels or what you do going into it. Likewise, I, I studied uh, maths, economics and chemistry at A level, um, so which, uh, you know, I didn't do accounting. And even those that actually did study accounting at A level, um, they, they don't know everything when you start. So often they're, they're still in the training sessions that you're in. Um, equally, I, I've worked with, I work with people who, who have studied all English subjects, for example, and just fancy turning to accounting. Um, or sort of English maths and, and maybe science or that kind of thing. Um, so, it, so it absolutely doesn't matter. Yeah, thank you. Um, and that's, I guess, the, the, the subjects element as well. And we've had quite a few questions today about um, experience and I guess especially relevant experience, maybe uh, a nervousness that people haven't got any. Um, but, you know, as a school leaver, is there a chance to, to get much? So did you have much relevant work experience or was it other work experience that, that helped you get the role? Uh, either Ellie or uh, Ollie. Okay, I'll go first, Ollie. You'll, you've probably got a better story than me. Um, I got some just working at a local firm, just in the accounts department, um, just sort of sending letters out, asking people, can you just go in and do a few days? It's probably the easiest way to, to go about doing it. It wasn't anything major. Like I didn't do anything in an audit. I was going into an audit firm, but I didn't do anything sort of in audit. So think it's just getting experience that's relevant to show that that's something you really want to go into and you've you've sort of thought about it as well i love to see you sent letters out to local firms that's really good um yeah amazing and was you keen. Got... ellie was ellie was keen that's why <laughs> yeah no, like, amazing and really good great you got a response from that as well so yeah top tip everyone um and ollie um story time go on um so i i actually only decided about three or four months before i started um, that I wanted to go into accountancy. Uh, the reason being, I, I was sat here, it was about April 2018, I was sat here on a hot Saturday um, studying for my A-level exams, um, which I guess a lot of the last couple of years, they haven't had exams, which I'm very jealous about. Uh, but I was sat here studying for a my A-level exams and it was hot and I thought, I really can't be bothered doing this for another three years. Really intense studying like that. Um, now, obviously, I do have exams. I do have to study for those, but it, it's it's a lot different. Um, so yes, yeah, so I decided on that on that Saturday afternoon. Yeah, I'm not going to uni anymore. Um, so because of that, I, I didn't have any work experience working for an accountancy firm. Uh, but about a year, my, at the end of my first year of college, um, I did a work ex a week of work experience with the senior executives at the Rugby Football League, who are the governing body for rugby league in the UK. Um, and I also did three days shadowing the chief exec of our local council. Um, who are new to rugby. Um, so I had absolutely zero accountancy related work experience. But it sounds like you used your, use your network and use your contacts very well. 
Great stuff. And then just, I mean, just something you mentioned there, probably need to pick it up. So um, you, it sounds like the, uh, the exams that you're doing at the moment in a much kind of uh, less strenuous way than you might at uni. So do you want to talk about some of the support that you get and what's made it easier for you to sit those exams? Okay, so I, I've just finished uh, my AAT qualification um, and the, the exams are all for AAT. You do them one by one. So you study for the module for, say, four to six weeks and then do an exam. Um, so I've done nine exams over three years with about 12 months out with co just due to COVID um, when XAT went doing remote invigilation. Um, so what support did I get? Um, there's absolutely tons. To be honest, I, I didn't take it all because I, I didn't need it, but there was a lot there. Um, so first of all, with the, the tuition provider, BPP, um, so they, a lot of your, uh, for school leavers, a lot of your uh, studying is done online. Um, so it's flexible. So you don't actually have to be in college at nine o'clock on a Wednesday. Um, you can do it online instead at home, which I, I thought was brilliant. Um, saved me traveling for an hour into Liverpool or Manchester. Um, but the support from DPP is great in that, um, that, that you can answer, ask a question and they'll, they'll get back to you sort of within a few hours. Um, Mazar wise, um, that we have training networks. Uh, so we have a Teams site, for example, um, that we can all sort of go into and, and just ask questions and get help. So obviously we're a national firm and, and we very much work nationally. Um, so I can, if there's sort of someone in London that I need help from, they'll quite happily give me a call and help me with something. Um, so that, that's very much how it works. Great. Thank you, Ollie. Um, and uh, we've had a question come in um, from Sue. So um, Sue's wants to know a little bit more about um, what, what it is actually to work in audit, um, how much of it is sitting in front of the computer and on spreadsheets, and how much, I guess, is, is client work? Um, so, yeah, obviously, it's been a bit different to, to what it's been like due to COVID. So I'll probably talk about what it was like probably before COVID and then what it's like now. So um, before it was very much going out on site, meeting clients, um, having them conversations. So a lot of our role is around applying professional skepticism. So what are people saying? Does that make sense? Um, and then sometimes it's a bit more about, you know, looking at the numbers. How do we test it? So that is the sort of computer screen element. But we also have that bit of speaking to clients in person and building relationships. I suppose the bit during COVID that we've missed out on is actually seeing them clients in person. Um, I went out to my first client again on Tuesday since COVID, which is a bit strange because we've been going into the office a little while now. Um, but yeah, you still are sort of having them client calls. It's just over a Teams or Zoom call rather than going out and seeing them. And the one thing in audit is probably more about the teamwork and realizing how much you learn from the people that are above you. So you're always in sort of a team. So you've always got that network to ask people. Um, and that's something that obviously during COVID was, was quite tough. But I think now we're sort of getting back to that and making sure that everyone that joins us has sort of a buddy or uh, they'll also have an appraising manager. So they've got a network to ask questions to um, during, during their sort of training and ask their training as well. Great, thank you, Ellie. And, um... I was also interested from, from your story that you were telling earlier, Ellie. So um, sounds like you made uh, really quick and good progress um, uh, in, in your time. And I just wondered how it was to be, I think you said that you were 22 and you were leading teams. Um, I wondered how, how that was. Um, and you, you may or may, you may not be one of the youngest in, the, in those teams. So how was it to be uh, relatively young and also leading? Um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was different, I suppose. Some of the people that were in the team were older than me. Um, some even the same level, same were both are probably qualified as well. Um, but I think it's one thing of being a school leaver is people that come in as graduates get three years and they're qualified, but they're also a lot older and they've also, you've also got one more year of experience than they do or two more years of experience, however long it takes to do exams and, and, and things like that. So I think it's, it's, you're still getting the same experience as a graduate, but you're just taking a bit longer, but then in the long run, like I'm 20, I was 22 and I was leading some of the biggest audits we have, which is just not likely to happen if I was a graduate. Cause like you'd be, I don't know if I 21, add your three years, you're going to be 24 at least um, as a minimum. So it, it's one of the things where it's great to have sort of written down that you've actually done that at the age of 22. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> and congrat congratulations on progressing your career so well. Um, 
So I'm just going to go back to the questions from the audience. Um, a good few have come in. Um, and some of these might be more, I guess, recruitment related questions. So I'm hazarding a guess that uh, Kathleen, these might be um, coming your way. Um, so a question from uh, Priscilla. So thank you very much, Priscilla. Um, so uh, can you apply for people who didn't do A-levels or haven't got any post-16 uh, education? Um, as I said, we do, um, the people opposite have left now, so I should hopefully not have as much background noise. Um, so we do look for A-levels in terms of kind of your new cast points, but we do look at equivalent. So if you've done something different, so if you've actually just done your AAT, instead of A-levels, obviously we'd take that into account. We did have a student that had done that this year and then he ended up just joining straight away as kind of as a graduate because obviously he had done the AAT and completed it. We would need kind of some things, we need to be kind of UCAS points or something equivalent. We wouldn't be able to kind of take you on straight away from kind of 16 without kind of that background. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, and then hopefully that covers one of the what are the approximate entry requirements questions as well. Um, we had the, we had this question and I, I asked it with a caveat last time, but um, Kathleen, is what is the can people ask about salary do you disclose that or is it kind of uh is it just competitive or similar and we just yeah but it's competitive is kind of what we um say so we don't disclose that until you can get the offer from us cool and, and i asked this previously as well to one of the other um to one of the others but it'd be interesting to hear recruiters point of view how what tips would you give to someone who is just starting out having the conversation of salary in what can potentially be quite a taboo topic what do you mean by that sorry well i guess it's just sometimes it's not uh it's a bit of a taboo topic people don't often like asking it so but it's an important part of working so i guess is have you got any tips for people as to how they would approach any salary discussions in their careers yeah definitely i'd probably say not to ask it in the interview uh it would be one thing not to do when you're kind of sitting opposite kind of the senior recruiter and not senior recruiter senior partner in the team um i think it's just something to discuss with the recruiters and kind of your onboarding team so you really understand um kind of what it's like it's not the salary is not what you might expect kind of I know it's always been before that you'd expect like an apprenticeship to be on kind of quite a low salary it's not we do offer a competitive salary and you do kind of progress up to the graduate salary quite quickly um so you don't kind of remain as a school leaver and therefore you're not kind of on the same throughout your career it's kind of after a year you then jump straight into the graduate route so it is competitive and it does work out quite well as kind of Ollie uh, politely put earlier <laughs> I'll, I'll just add as well Kathleen um, my, my sister's actually just started working at Mazar this year um, in, in audit, um, looking not, not in my, my team. Um, and I'm, and she, she's a, uh, she, just, she just graduated over the summer. Um, now I'm on a, a much higher salary than she is, and she's a graduate. Um, now there is, I have worked here for three years and I do have a portfolio of clients, um, but the, the, the same way, um, those starting at, at my age now that are starting as graduates. Um, at Mazar are not on as much as I am so so you've got family bragging rights around the around the dinner table good um excellent yeah and Kathleen thanks for answering that question I guess you know really top tip in terms of talking about it or not talking about it in the interview process as well and and that, that is maybe something you you wouldn't know until you hear a tip like that at an event like this so thank you very much Kathleen well, I'm actually conscious of um of time I didn't it kind of caught up on me a little bit we've only got minutes to go so I'm gonna look down the list and think of uh try and find one that is a good ending question and Casper you have delivered so thank you Casper um so to Ellie and Ollie particularly um uh, do you find your work meaningful um and what contribution do you make to the world what a question to end on I'll, I'll start and say um I, I do now I work with with private owned owner managed businesses uh, so privately owned um, so I feel like all the work I do is genuinely helping a business grow um, and, and at the end of the day helping sort of real people um, so I feel like I, I get quite a lot off that I'm dealing with individuals and local people as well um, which is great and I think that to answer sort of the, the second part of that question uh, how do you uniquely contribute to the world um, I'll answer it in, in sort of two parts. Well, first of all, I talked earlier about CSR, um, and that's a real key focus at Mazar. So I feel like we do make quite a big contribution to society at Mazar because of that. Um, but also, how do, how do we contribute to the world? Um, we're, we're, as a firm, one of our key drivers is quality. Um, so, for example, audit quality. Um, so we're, we're, we're thinking about giving back to society by not having a, another big audit scandal, for example. Um, so I think equally that's quite important. Cool. Thank you, Ollie. And 
It's going to be a very quick answer, Ellie, but I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Um, yeah, I suppose it's just, it just depends on what client I'm working on and whether we do it that way. So I have worked in the previously with things with people that work in academies who get a lot from learning from, from you and the knowledge you have. Um, it's quite different now with the people I work with. They're very sort of, these people have been qualified a long time. They've got really good technical knowledge, but it's being able to sometimes just d deliver on time and things like that. That's the sort of thing that sort of means, means the most to me. Great. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, thank you all three of you. Uh, really, really appreciate your your honesty and your insight as well to what you're doing. Um, sat in, we were, as we were laughing about backstage, it sound, certainly sounds like a fun place to work. So thanks for bringing that across. Um, uh, thank you to everyone for your questions. Really appreciate that. Um, I'm conscious of time. Um, I, this is also the last presentation I'm going to be kind of doing the QA for as well. So I'm handing over to my colleague, Nisha. So I just want to say a massive thank you to all of the names that I've asked questions from. Some, uh, some have asked a lot of questions throughout today. So you certainly made my job, job easier and uh, hopefully you've got a lot of good insight as well. So see you back on the main stage or my colleague, Nisha, will see you back on the main stage um, in about eight minutes. But thank you all three of you. Really appreciate that.